it's Janelle and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to attempt to make my dream turtleneck. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a turtleneck girl. I love wearing them like I am today underneath my dresses to be able to wear them during the colder months. And I recently found a turtleneck online that I'm absolutely obsessed with, so much so that I nearly bought it. But then I managed to find some fabric that was really similar, so I'm going to try and make it today. So it's this one here by Princess Highway Clothing. What I love most about this turtleneck is that it's got these really beautiful ruffles along the neckline and on the sleeves as well, which are just so cute. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to try and replicate that. I don't think it's actually possible because I think it's just the way the fabric has been made maybe, um, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. I'll try a few things. I've got quite a bit of fabric so I can experiment a little bit. I don't have many photos of it, but here is another view of it. You can kind of see what it will look like underneath dresses, which is how I plan to wear it. So yeah, you can just see that little ruffle along the neckline, which I'm just obsessed with. So let me show you the fabric now. Um, I managed to find this one at Spotlight. I'll try to leave a link to it down in the description below this video if you'd like to pick it up for yourself. It's a beautiful ribbed jersey fabric and this color is one of my all-time favorite colors as you probably know if you've seen any of my videos but for some reason the camera really struggles to pick it up properly. It's definitely a really beautiful almost raspberry brick red I would say. It's definitely not bright, it's a dull kind of red and the camera picks it up as being really bright. Yeah it's more a uh, kind of dull brick raspberry red which is absolutely beautiful I think. I don't really have a pattern for a turtleneck like this, um, but I did manage to pick up uh, this pattern here. It's McCall's 7999. Um, it's actually a turtleneck dress, which is lovely in itself, and I will definitely be making that dress one day. But I'm going to try and see if I can crop it a little bit and just make it into a top instead. So I've traced the pattern out onto some tracing paper in the size that I want to make it. So I'm going to get started by cutting the turtleneck out. As I was laying out the fabric, I noticed there is a slight flaw in it, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it does happen from time to time. So I've just made sure to put that flaw facing up so I can see it and keep an eye on it and try not to cut out any pieces with that floor in a prominent spot, if that makes sense. Also today I'm wearing the hazel dress that I made during my 100,000 subscriber live stream. If you didn't watch that I was making this dress um, but I was leaving out the bottom darts of the dress to kind of create a more boxy loose fitting style dress and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I've shared it on Instagram but I thought I would quickly mention it here as well in case you don't have Instagram but this is what it looks like. Really loose and flowy and comfortable. My pieces are now all cut out and now I'm just trying to figure out what stitch would be best to use on my machine. Um, these are all the stitches that my machine has and to be honest I'm not very experienced with stretch fabric. This is definitely a bit of a challenge for me. So I've done a bit of googling and I think you can use this one here. They kind of say a really narrow zigzag stitch. I just don't know about that. I might do a few test runs, see what we come up with, but I think this one here is a straight stretch stitch. I have a stretch needle in my machine already, um, so that's all good to go. I just need to figure out which stitch is going to work best. I know you can also use an overlocker to sew stretch fabric, but I only have white thread for my overlocker and I think that will be a little bit too noticeable, so I can't do that this time, but if I had the red thread, that would work really well. 
I might give number eight a go, see what happens. I'm actually gonna try, we had two pieces together. Let me try a few others um, and I'll give you my verdict at the end. Okay, so here are the results. So zigzag doesn't sit as nice. It's a little bit bumpy. The straight stitch, which is this one here, worked really well. But I think my favorite is the, I don't know, I think it's called an over edge stitch. Um, but when you open up the seam itself, it's really nice and neat. So I think that is the winner. So now that I've picked out the stitch I'm going to use, I want to have a go at experimenting with the ruffles. So I'm going to attempt one thing, and if that doesn't work, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I know I could, again, use my overlocker to do like a lettuce hem kind of ruffle, but that's not quite the look I'm going for. So I basically have this long piece of ribbed fabric. Um, it's just a long rectangle that I have pressed in half. I'm going to try and do some gathering stitches on this to ruffle it up a bit. Um, hopefully it'll work. Let's give it a try. Once I finally managed to gather the fabric rectangle, I then pressed the gathers to set them in place and to stop the ruffle coiling so much. I then sandwiched the ruffle in between the two neckband pieces and pin it in place. The gathered fabric and the different layers were starting to get pretty thick by this point and my poor little domestic sewing machine could only just sew through it all. Okay, this is how it's looking. I'm actually really, really happy with how that has turned out. I was not actually expecting it to work. So I'm really happy about that. We're definitely not in the clear yet. I have to somehow figure out how to put this neckband actually on the top. So until that's done, I'm not gonna be too confident about it. It still may not work out yet. Um, but now I just need to remove the gathering stitches from the ruffle and we'll just keep carrying on. To finish the ruffle neckband, I trimmed the excess fabric away and then folded the neckband in half widthways with right sides together. Then I stitched along the raw edge to create the neckband loop. And here's the ruffled collar. I'm really impressed with how that's looking. I mean, it's a little messy on the inside, but once the whole garment is stitched together, I will hand stitch that and tuck it in and hopefully make that look a little bit better. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. So now it's time to stitch the rest of the top together and then we'll be able to attach this to the top and hopefully it'll all work out. To sew the actual top, I start by sewing the two back pieces together. This is what the pattern I use said to do, but at the end of the video, I talk about how I probably wouldn't have a seam at the back if I was to do this project again. I then stitch the front of the top to the back of the top at the shoulder seams. Now it's time to attach the ruffled neckband to the top. To do this, I place a pin at each quarter point of the neckband and at each quarter point of the neck opening. This is an easy way to pin one circle, the neckband, to another circle, the neck opening. With right sides together, I simply match each pin of the neckband to the pins at the neck opening. And then stitch them together, stretching the fabric if I need to get it nice and even. So I 
quickly tried it on as it is currently and oh my goodness, look at that. It's a cute little ruffled turtleneck. I was not expecting it to work actually and I'm really impressed with how it's looking so far. You kind of can't see the back, I don't think. Um, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's looking a lot better than I thought it was going to. So I think this is going to work out. Then I pin and stitch the arms to the shoulder seams. And I then stitch along the entire side seam, including the arms. Okay, so I just quickly tried on the turtleneck and it's looking amazing. I actually couldn't be happier with it, but because the ruffled detail on the neck was actually quite difficult to do, and to be completely honest with you, I think it was mostly a fluke. So I'm not going to try and attempt to do the same to the sleeves. I think the ruffled detail on the neck is enough and the sleeves don't really need it. Um, so now all that's left to do is hem the bottom of the top and the cuffs. Isn't it adorable? Like I said, I'm actually really impressed that I managed to make this. I did not think it was going to work, so I'm really happy about that. Let me insert some footage of me wearing it now so you can see what it looks like in all its glory. to make this turtleneck again I would change a few things up um, the pattern for some reason had the back piece in two pieces and it's kind of made a weird crease in the back um, which could have been avoided if I had just cut it on the fold so I don't know why the pattern did that I'm not sure if it's because it was a dress it was meant to have that in the back or not but I definitely wouldn't do that next time and the only other thing that I had a bit of issues with is the tension on the hemming of the bottom of the top went a bit funny and it's gone a little bit like a lettuce hem um it's just something to do with the tension of the stitch I think and I might unpick it and redo it but it does give a cute little ruffled look to the bottom of the top I just don't want it to look like it was a mistake um I think it does kind of just look a little bit like a tension issue to me so I will probably fix that up. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I sew up my dream turtleneck. It's actually been a lot of fun to experiment with stretch fabrics. Like I said at the start I haven't used stretch fabrics much before so yeah this is a lot of fun and I hope to use more stretch fabric in the future. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to come find me on Instagram to see some of the other things I make and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching! Thank you.